<clears throat> yep. Hey, it's Aaron from GameWithDudes.com. And before I crack the seal on uh, some of the stuff I picked up during the holiday, Christmas to be more specific, and dive into the ridiculous number of Steam games that that I picked up because they were on sale. Take a look back at uh, 2016, some of my most favorite experiences. So yeah, it's basically a top 10. So number 10, Virginia uh, from Variable State. Uh, Virginia is about an FBI agent um, whose actions, inactions, motives, etc., are somewhat open to interpretation. The game does not move linearly. It kind of moves around uh, throughout her experiences uh, as she rises in the ranks uh, of being an FBI agent, uh, maybe compromising some integrity, maybe not. Uh, uh, looking into maybe investigating some of the actions, motives, etc., of some of her or a colleague. Uh, the game kind of moves around a lot. There's no dialogue, so the developers certainly wanted uh, players to, you know, to form their own opinions and really left things open to interpretation, which I really appreciated. Um, it's kind of thing that really I would think does not speak to a wide wide audience but it really spoke to me and i really enjoyed the game and i highly recommend it that is virginia number nine all right night school studio uh this is oxen free uh, which is a game about uh some young people on an island and an island uh there's a lot more there than meets the eye the gameplay really revolves around you picking dialogue choices which affect uh, how your character interacts uh, with uh, other people that are on the island as well. And as you kind of reveal really what the history of this island is, uh, the writing is very well done. The game is very creepy, kind of sticks with you for a little while. Uh, definitely something I enjoyed. Stood out. Number eight. Number eight is kind of self-explanatory. Uh, it's Doom. It's a game that I was largely ready to pretty much ignore and then it came out and it was a lot of fun and a lot better than it had any business being and I appreciate that. Number seven. Pacross 3D from HAL Labs. I'd love to show actual gameplay Pacross 3D round two, uh, but we all know what playing any extended music from Nintendo will do or showing any gameplay will do. Hopefully these static images uh, will make this allow this, this video to be left alone. Uh, the complexity that Pacross uh, 3D Round 2 added over the original with uh, the rounded edges just expands the number of objects that you can reveal just vastly and then the different colors and it went from I mean, it's really challenging. There is a ton of content. So if you're really into Pacross uh, 3D or Pacross in general, I highly recommend you check out Pacross 3D. Round two. I keep forgetting round two. Number six. Ah, Overcooked. So Overcooked. <laughs> uh, Overcooked is from uh, Ghost Town Games Limited. And his basic plot is you're trying to feed the spaghetti monster thing that's bringing about the end of the world. You're not doing well enough. So you are whisked back in time so you can learn how to cook more efficiently. And as you move around uh, the, the world in, in your van, a game can be played solo or uh, with up to three others, even splitting a controller, which seems completely insane. But the, the here's the thing of the game. There's always more tasks than people to do them. So the game constantly changes things in the environment and that forces you to be able to it forces you to just be flexible you, you might be doing you might be flipping burgers now you know you gotta flip burgers and wash a dish because only two dishes and just the, the scenarios that that they put you in are just completely insane it's a great game number five d-pad studios uh 
yeah owl boy was a game that has i think been in development for around what, nine to ten years and it finally came out in 2016 and it is definitely a love letter to 16 quasi 32 bit 32 bit games um while it is technically a metroid banger it is somewhat linear because you can kind of get through the game without doing without really finding everything and i know most a lot of Metroid Bank, you don't have to find everything, but it might be a little more linear than people are letting on about it. That does not, to me, that's not a negative. I found the puzzles, to be fair. Um, it, it, it There's a lot of combat, there's boss battles, but it's really the dialogue and the character development that really sent on this game. Really good writing, very enjoyable. It, it's just, you know, it's, it's a great game. Number four, Thumper. Uh, from Drool. Um, Thumper is, is definitely one of the showcases for VR. It was for me for a PSVR within my own home. Uh, I think the tagline is like rhythm, violence. Basically, you are some sort of a space beetle speeding down a seemingly uh, infinite track. And there's different things on the track, different... Uh, slides and layouts and all types of different things that you'll interact with and the game is very it's much longer than one might think there's boss battles i mean it just really it really throws a lot and actually each level changes up uh the actual um that the actual signature of of the music in of the game it just you can tell that this is really a love letter from drool and it's not a quick experience. I mean, there, there's a lot of game here. I mean, I think each like level has like 20 sec, 18, 20 sections. I mean, it, it's, it really, it is a full game. It is not, you know, you pick it up and 10 minutes later, I've seen everything. It, it's, it, it is really something else. And just sending back those waves of energy at the bosses, it just never got old. Like, like how time would slow down and you just send back the shock wave. It just, I know it's a really good experience and it, it plays extremely well in VR and just normally. So it really, it just checks so many boxes and check them and quite well. So it just set out. Thumper is a, is a fantastic game. So Thumper from Drool. Number three. Number three is Inside from Play Dead. Uh, Play Dead is also the developer of Limbo, and this game is sort of like Virginia in that there's a lot going on you have to pay attention to, and it, the game does not explicitly tell you exactly who your character is, what their motivations are. You're just you're in an environment. You can definitely tell that uh, you're in hot that. Whatever you're doing uh, is definitely getting the attention of the people who are controlling this facility. And just the number of just subtle things I've never picked up on and having a discussion with somebody about the game. It just reveals so much more. So many things I just did not see. And I thought that was fantastic. I just, you know, I'm thinking I'm picking up on all these things. And I, I point out a couple of things to, to people I discussed it with. But then for them to come back and say, oh, did you see this? Did you see that? Did you notice this? And often my answer was, no, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't see it. I mean, the game really. There's really just a lot there. Now, I, I know that there is a school of thought that says, hey, if you have a great story, why not tell it? So some people interpret sort of the open ended, somewhat ambiguous nature of many of the themes and just the occurrences in it to be. A negative because they feel like hey if you have a great story tell the story so i can understand everything about it but i think it makes it far more interesting that they don't tell you everything about it that's kind of a reoccurring theme here i i, I know but i think it's interesting that they don't tell you everything they leave it open for you to sit for you to just sort of make your own you know uh make your own draw your own conclusion and sort of figure out for yourself like exactly what is going on in this facility what are these people's motivations? Why are they doing the things that they're doing? And I just, I found that to be very interesting. The 
the ending though the ending was weird but I liked it number two number two is severed from Drinkbox Studios uh, makers of Guacamelee uh, this I played this on the Vita and it came out uh, I think on iOS maybe Android but definitely um, 3DS Wii U so about a young girl her family is murdered and her arm is severed and she's given a weapon by whatever this thing is that would kind of that would, that would kind of freak me out just a little bit she's given a weapon and she embarks on an adventure this is definitely a metroidvania style game where much of the game is gated until you've gained certain abilities uh, I poured a lot of hours into this and it is a wonderful experience. I think the Vita and probably the 3DS are really, are just really perfect probably for a game like this. Just the, the action with the, the timing aspect and fighting multiple enemies and figuring out how to use your freezing abilities and taking their abilities and using it against them. I mean, the, I don't know. I'm, the game is just, it's just fantastic. I, I really enjoyed it. There were times I got, I got stuck and got a little frustrated, but just a number of things they introduced for you to do. You know, we start collecting body parts and you there's an upgrade system. So there's definitely a path for you to augment your abilities as you collect, you know, livers and entrails. Because what young girl doesn't collect entrails, you know, or giblets, you know. So, yeah. And number one. Number one. Uh. Yeah, I talked about this game a whole lot this year because it's one of those things where you're playing. And it's like I have to tell somebody about this thing. This is awesome. You know, it's it's super hot. Um, the gameplay of when you move, time moves at a normal pace, and when you stop, time still does technically move. It's just significantly slower, and that is that is the gimmick per se, but. It works well. The game is, you can beat the game probably, I don't know, three to four hours your first time. And some people might think, hey, that's pretty short. Um, it is relative. I mean, it, it that could be short to some. To me, uh, that was a perfect length for the game. It, it didn't overstay its welcome. Uh, the gimmick was just intensely fun and made you feel awesome throughout. You know, you're shooting, you run out of bullets, so you throw the gun. You might shatter someone. You throw the gun, run over, punch somebody. Their gun flips in the air. You grab it, shoot somebody behind you. It just, it gives you all these really dope moments just throughout the entire thing. And it, the, the challenge is definitely there. It's definitely that levels where I had to restart over and over and over again. Especially in some of the close quarter stuff. But it's just a fantastic game. And on top of that, there's sort of a a meta commentary about games be becoming one with the game, getting wrapped up in it and becoming part of it, per se. Uh, there's definitely some commentary there as well. So that helps. So you have you know, great gameplay uh, that really never got old and never really stopped being awesome. And then you add some somewhat of the, com the commentary to it. And it's just a fantastic package. So. Super Hot is definitely our number one. Now, yes, these are ordered from 10 to 1. Um, they're all great games. Uh, just this being number one does not necessarily mean that it was far better than my number nine. Just they're all great games. I would suggest checking them all out. And now that I've gotten through that, I need to dive back into all these new pickups and other things. So it's the beginning of a new year, 2017. Hopefully it'll be a happy one for you. Uh, make the best of it. You know, there's some things that happen in 2016 happen every year that are not necessarily choices that we would make for ourselves. But you got to roll with those punches and just keep living, do the best you can do. Uh, feel free to like, subscribe, uh, check out the YouTube channel, check out GameWithUse.com. That's it.